Hey everybody, welcome friends to Happy, Joyous and Free. I'm your neuro coach, Melanie Yates, and today we're gonna to be focusing on body language and how body language actually helps calm us and our brain reacts so well to body language that it literally will release serotonin, dopamine, and hormones that calm us. And the number one reason we wanna talk about this is because we have to learn how to deal with our anxiety and our stress. And I was thinking about how I've been waking up anxious and afraid. And what it causes me to do is wanted to stay in bed. Like I have just been using fear to keep me in bed, to keep me from doing the next indicated step. I literally have been having these thoughts of fear and being afraid to do what I need to do to get the day going that I will stay in bed because it's a way I can kind of hide. And, you know, I run around having so much to do that it could look like, well, I just need rest and I can use that as an excuse to stay in bed. But I think so many people don't really know how to deal with stress. And so what happens is it accumulates and our brain starts becoming prone to just feeling anxious all the time. And that part of our brain is the fight and flight. It's literally the brain stem. And that is the part of our brain that is trying to keep us safe. And it literally is trying to keep us safe by staying the same. Not only that, it is keeping us from moving forward. And when we are in that fight or flight or freeze part of our brain, we literally cannot think clearly. And when, when that is going on, the, science has proven that we can't learn new things and we can't create positive thoughts. So we're, we're in a real dilemma here if we don't learn how to deal with our brain when it is under stress or when it's in fear. It doesn't really matter. So back to my story of being in bed and just realizing that I am unmotivated, uninspired to get up and get out of bed. And, you know, a lot of us have children and jobs and appointments that make us get out of bed. And I don't know about you, but during COVID, some of these things were taken from us and from there really wasn't anywhere to go. And so what started happening for me was that I didn't have anywhere to go. So if I couldn't go to the gym, well, I'll just stay in bed, you know? And it started becoming this behavior <laughs> that I was using as a way to cope. It was a defense mechanism to keep me safe and to hide and to not really deal with my emotions. And we are always gonna be talking about how to deal with our emotions, especially stress and anxiety. And that is the goal here. We're learning tools, um, the first thing is to notice, to really acknowledge and be aware that I'm having a feeling that's creating stress and anxiety that's, that also produces a behavior, right? And then that's going to produce results. And so here, this, this is my behavior. I'm staying in bed because I'm tired and it feels like I'm tired all the time. And there's this thought that there's too much to do, I don't have enough time, I'm gonna make a mistake, and I'm not gonna be good enough. So I ended up figuring out what was keeping me in bed, is I didn't feel like I was gonna get the things that I wanted in the time that I was looking to get them, and I was also feeling like I was gonna look stupid if I procrastinated or I didn't do it right, and so I just would rather just stay in bed and not even try to get my dreams, not even try to reach my goals because 
I'm so afraid of not achieving them or not feeling good enough about myself that it's easier to just stay in bed. So maybe you don't even know why you're stressed. Maybe you don't even know what you're afraid of. And that's okay because what we're gonna do today is do something so simple. We're just gonna focus in on the way we wake up. So as soon as your eyes wake up, whether it's to the alarm or you wake up by yourself, I want you to kind of check in with yourself. What am I feeling right now? And like I was describing, I was say, I was feeling like I just want to stay in bed. I don't want to get up. There's nothing really to get up for. <laughs> and this was kind of causing like a depression for me. And I was feeling anxiety and and shame around I should be doing something. I should get up, right? And so what we want to do is give our brain a signal and a tool to kind of calm our nervous system. So if we can't make good decisions on that fighting brain, we want to bring the brain into a resting state, a calm state. So the way we're going to do that is use our hands. So when we're in bed, when you wake up, I want you to take your hands and put them on your heart. And there's something very calming about your hands on your heart. It's like, it's almost like a little hug you're giving yourself. And what we're doing here is we're soothing ourselves. You know, so often we are looking for people, places, and things to calm us, to soothe us, to encourage us, to support us. And that's wonderful. And the other part of that is that we need to learn how to self-soothe. We need to learn how to comfort ourselves and support ourselves. No one cares about you the way you care about you. And part of this exercise is training our brain to love ourselves and care about ourselves and build neural pathways that are conducive of self-love and self-esteem and self-confidence. And we can only do that when we're gentle and kind to ourselves. And I don't know about you, but I am so hard on myself. And this has been a tool to kind of calm me along with a mantra. So I'm not only using my hands, which is a, is a body language that's telling my brain it's okay. And I'm kind of nurturing my heart by holding it and putting my hands there. I am going to say, I'm okay. I am loved. I am safe. So just those three words, I'm okay, I am loved, I am safe. And this is what we are saying to ourselves first thing in the morning, after we've turned off our alarm, after we've realized it's morning and I have to get up and I know what time it is, I'm putting my hands over my heart as a signal that I am safe, I am okay, I am loved. And this is a way to encourage ourselves and support ourselves and just take a moment to comfort ourselves as we start our day. Now, there could be so many different reasons that we start the day off with anxiety. Um, and there could be so many reasons why people aren't getting enough sleep, even going to sleep. I think people are anxious and worried and concerned. And insomnia is such a huge problem. We want to use our own body language as a way to 
comfort ourselves so that we can feel safe to use our whole brain instead of just that fight or flight. And what we're trying to do is connect the right and left and frontal lobes so that they're all turned on. And when we are able to use body language, when we use feelings, when we use auditory and visual, we are turning on parts of our brain. And these neurons in our brain, the more neurons we can turn on, the quicker they are to help us build a new way of thinking, a new way of behaving. So the more neurons that are firing at the same time, the quicker we can get to a different kind of behavior. And so the way we turn those neurons on are by visualizing, by speaking our mantra. If you could say it out loud, that would be the best. If you can only visualize and and imagine that you're hearing the words, I'm okay, I'm safe, I am loved, that's gonna be good too. And the more that we can get involved, the more neurons that are turned on in our brain, the quicker we can get to the result we're looking for. So I wanted to mention um, something that's going on here, the science behind this training the brain. And basically it, it comes down to the vagus nerve. And this, this vagus nerve is responsible for releasing dopamine, which is a feel good hormone that causes us and helps us to relax. And so there are so many amazing neuroscientists out there and neurologists that are doing studies and research about our brain and how the reticular our activating system, the RAS, is able to actually help us change the way we feel by finding things that we focus on. So the cool thing about the ARS is that it's a bundle of nerves at our brainstem that filters out unnecessary information so that the important stuff gets through. So the RAS is the reason you learn a new word and then start hearing it everywhere. It's why you can tune out a crowd and yet immediately snap to attention when someone says your name or something that at least sounds like it. So the RAS is very sensitive to our name because it knows our name. It listens for our name. It also listens for, you know, danger, you know, like a siren or a crashing sound or things that our brain would know, like, you know, we need to get out of the street or we need to run or we need to <laughs> move, right? So the RAS is going to be particular about those two things. And the third thing that it's so particular about is what we focus on. So if we are focusing on this new word we learned, then we start hearing it. If we are looking for a car we want to buy and we've decided it is a Panamera Porsche, we will start seeing a Panamera Porsche everywhere we go. Our brain is so magnificent because it definitely notices what we want to focus on. So when we start focusing on I'm safe, I'm okay, I'm loved, and even if you really want to get this RAS to pay attention, when we get up in the morning and we put our hands on our heart, we can say our name first. So if I say, Mel, you are special. Mel, you are safe. Mel, you are loved. Mel, it's going to be okay. 
my RAS is paying attention because it knows my name. And it's also another way, it's looking at um, ourselves from a third person gives us an objective view. It's almost like I'm looking at me from another person's perspective and it allows me to actually be more objective. It allows me to see myself in a different way. And especially if I'm having a hard time with the relationship with me, if I take myself out of it and look from a third person, it's just another way of kind of talking to our brain on, an, on another level. So if something isn't working, we'll try it a different way so that we can get a different result. You know, doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result is clearly insanity. So we want to try some different ways of getting our brain's attention. And that's why we're gonna use this body language by putting our hands over our heart and using a mantra to calm the nervous system. Now, there's a couple other ways that we can calm the nervous system. Um, you know, a lot of us end up feeling stuck or powerless over certain situations. I know when COVID hit, we all didn't really know what to do. It was like, we didn't know if this was gonna be a couple weeks, a year. And now that we know it's been going on, our life as we know it, it we now know it's, it's just never gonna be the same. It's not going back to the way it was. And so I think anytime an event happens like this, a divorce, a death, a loss of a job, big change, right? There's always like these turning points of, you kind of know who you were before and now it, there's there's a new you there's there's this before you and this after you from this event and so what happens is events change change us and it's like sometimes we want to just go back to the way we were i just want my old life and we need tools to help us adapt to new life because Life is always changing and there will always be something going on. There will always be a challenge. There will always be struggle. That's what life is. And yet we can thrive through struggle and challenge and pain. It's just most of us don't know how to do that. And so this is, this is a tool of training our brain, using body language, using these different neurons to fire off together so that we can choose something different, to empower us that there actually is another choice. Yes, I can stay in bed and feel sorry for myself, or I can start building a neuro pathway that is gonna calm that central nervous system so that I have clarity and I can see other choices. So, First of all, I just want to say it's not your fault if you're feeling this way. You know, you learn to turn off your body's stress response. It's we get to learn how to do it. And if you've been suffering from depression and anxiety, it's not your fault. You didn't know. They don't teach us this stuff in school, right? So we get to show up and take responsibility for our feelings. And the first step is the awareness of something's going on, like something isn't quite right, something feels wrong. And once we, once we can see that, it's just like a truth GPS. We can literally, like a map, know where we are, know where we wanna go, and then follow the directions. And that's what I hope that I can continue to show you where you are and where you wanna go and these directions and guidelines to help you choose different things because you have your agency and that is what's gonna give you power and choices to see what you would like to do. What's the next step? So our body language is actually going to relax and rest, give us that calm state of mind so that we can use 
these neural pathways to retrain the way we respond to anxiety and stress. So that vagus nerve, I wanted to talk to you about that because that is the way that we're able to use the natural dopamine in our body to calm us down. So using this tool of putting your hands over your heart and taking a deep breath in and saying your mantra is just one way to do it. You can take a walk to get into this state of calming your brain. You can meditate, you can hum or chant, you can gargle water. I thought that was an interesting one. You can go to nature, you can sing at the top of your lungs, you can dance, you can take a warm bath, you can take a cold shower. These are all ways that the vagus nerve is turned on to help you rewire your brain. So what we want to do is focus on the things that are going to help us move forward. And the RAS is another way of using um, our brain to help us change behavior so that we don't have to be owned by these feelings of anxiety and stress. And so we want to um, create a safe place. We want to start our day in the morning from a calm place. So what I'd like you to do is when you wake up in the morning, we're going to start this tomorrow, you're going to put your hands on your heart, you're going to take a deep breath in. Mel, it's going to be okay. Mel, you are safe. Mel, you are loved. And you might need to do this a couple times in the morning. You may need to do this during the day. You may need to do this before you go to bed. We're going to practice this body language of telling our brain it's okay. And the RAS is paying attention. The RAS is looking for what you want to focus on. And when it knows that it's important for you to feel safe and loved and that when you focus that it's important, it is going to look for evidence that that is true. And that's what we're doing here. We are creating a safe place in our brain to walk through pain, challenge. We need to help retrain our brain. Now, the other thing I want to say is about trauma. When there's trauma, just saying a happy little phrase like, you know, you're safe, isn't going to cut it. There's going to be you know, our body, there's something in our body that has a memory. It's, it's a, it's a emotional memory. Things that have happened to us, experiences we've gone through are not necessarily just going to be wiped away just because of time. Our body has this memory. It has an emotional memory and something that happened decades ago can be stuck inside of us. And there are tools for that too. And there are lots of professional help that science is coming up with and new technologies of um, EMDR, tapping. There are more chances to be able to go back and use visualization and use these tools that we know about the brain to rewire and not change your circumstances, but literally change you and change how you comprehend and deal with stress, how you comprehend and deal with trauma so that it can be healed. And we're not changing what happened to you. We're changing who you are. And when you change who you are, you are actually able to create 
more for your future, different things for your future. You, when you change, you create different results. And it all, it all comes down to meeting yourself where you are. That's really important to acknowledge where you are right now. And there may need to be healing. And we can definitely work on that on these one-on-one -on -one trainings. But for now, we're opening up this tool and this skill to use the vagus nerve, to use the neurons in our brain, the RAS, to cultivate a new neuropathway to deal with stress and anxiety. And this is just one stepping stone to helping us get to a new place where we can enjoy life, love life, be excited about life, get up out of bed and be ready, inspired. When our nervous system is calm, that's exactly what we can do. We have more choices and agency and clarity. And that's what I want for you. For you. So I love you. I want the very best for you. And I am so looking forward to hearing the results of this hands on heart mantra. Until I see you next time, this is Melanie Yates.